Assalamu alaikum and greetings. In this video, we're going to talk about isomerism in alkene compound. In general, there are two types of isomerism commonly observed for alkene compound. The first one is structural isomerism and optical isomerism. In this video, we'll be focusing on the structural isomerism only. The optical isomerism will be discussed in next video. Structural isomerism can be divided into three classes, which is chain isomerism, position isomerism, and functional group isomerism. Although they are different in name, they are sharing the same concept, which is they will have the same molecular formula but different bonding sequences. So, what does this mean? Let's say we have a compound which contains 4 carbon. This 4 carbon can be drawn in two options. The first one is the first carbon attached to the second carbon, attached to the third carbon, and finally attached to the fourth carbon. The other option, we can have the first carbon attached to the second carbon, attached to the third carbon. However, the fourth carbon is attaching to the second carbon. As you can see here, in both of the structure, they have the same number of carbon. However, the arrangement is different from one another. Let's take a look at an example. Given a compound C4H9Cl. Please take note, I'm going to use this same example to explain the optical isomer in our next video. For C4H9Cl, we have four options to draw the structure. The first one is, we're going to start off with a linear structure of 4 carbon and then we're going to attach the chlorine at the end of the carbon chain. So as you can see here, this will be numbered as first carbon, second carbon, third carbon and also fourth carbon. This will be called as 1 chloro butane. For the next structure, I'm also going to draw a 4 continuous carbon carbon chain. However, for this time around, I'm going to change the chlorine atom to the second carbon. If we do the numbering, the name that we're going to get for this compound is 2 chloro butane. For the third structure, instead of 4, I'm going to draw a 3 carbon chain. The CL will be positioned at the first carbon, while now the last carbon is attached to the second carbon. We're going to assign the numbers, and the name will become 1 chloro 2 methyl butane. Okay, that's a mistake here. It's supposed to be propane not butane because the longest chain was 3 and finally there will be 3 carbon chain the methyl and the chlorine will be located at the same carbon which is carbon number 2 if we do the numbering the name will become 2 chloro 2 Methyl butane. Here's another mistake. It's supposed to be propane, not butane, because it has three carbon. All of these examples relate to the chain isomerism and also position isomerism. Let's say we draw a four carbon compound and then we add chlorine at the other end of the carbon chain. Is this considered as an isomer? The answer is no, because if we do the numbering, the structure will become the first isomer that we have drawn before. Same goes, if we draw a four carbon chain 
and then we position it at carbon number 3 this also will be the same just like to chlorobutane because the numbering will start from the closest to the substituent so this is also cannot considered as isomer These are the hints to draw a correct structure for the isomers of organic compound. First, draw a linear carbon carbon chain for the first structure. For instance, if the compound contains 5 carbon, we might want to attempt to draw 5 carbon in the straight line first. And if there are any substituent, we are going to place them at the end of the carbon carbon chain. Secondly, arrange the substituent at different carbon. For instance, if we have 5 carbon, instead of putting it at the terminal carbon, we try to put it in the middle. So it will be looking like this. Lastly, shorten the carbon carbon chain and vary the position of the substituent. For instance, if we start from 5 carbon just now, we're going to shorten it into 4 carbon only. And then we can place the other carbon at the second carbon. And we can also put the halogen at other places. We're going to repeat the process until there is no more isomer that can be drawn. That's all for this video. If you have any question, please leave a comment below or discuss it in the telegram group. See you guys in the next video. Goodbye.